Hi, and welcome back to Cole's Custom Shop. Today I'm going to be showing you how to design farm toys on Tinkercad. This is the 3D design software that I use so that I can 3D print farm toys, and today we are making a spreader box. This could go on the back of a truck or have its own wheels. So right here I've selected a box and I'm just going to type in how long and how wide I want it to be. I've already figured out I want this a certain width and length. Super easy to just click on it and type rather than drag it to make it bigger or smaller. Just checking around, looking at my different angles, this helps with really complicated stuff in order to see what it looks like. So right now I've copied the main base of the box, I guess you would call it. And I'm building a little wall here. Again, with just clicking the boxes and typing the amount for how many millimeters wide and tall I want it. And now that I have a wall at the height that I kind of want it, I'm trying to figure out how's the best way to make it look realistic. And we'll start with just copy and paste, basically selecting the item, hitting the copy box, and sliding it over. Now, I always use my arrows to move it over because I can move it over a set amount. Uh, if you see in the bottom right corner, it says one millimeter on snap grid. That means that if I press my left arrow 10 times, it's going to move that box 10 millimeters to the left. Again, with kind of a copy and paste thing with the end cap on the spreader box and moving that over with the arrow key as well. A uh, good thing to note is that that snap grid you can change to half a millimeter all the way down to 0 0.1 um, and uh, even move it up to 10 millimeters if you're working on something big. So one nice thing I like about this is that I can save something and modify it without destroying the original thing. So as you can see, I copied an end box over here because I want to do some modifications to it. But I don't want to ruin the thing I've already made. So I'm just uh, building it separately. Now you can see the function I used there is a centering thing. So I want this box right in the middle. So I selected both things and clicked in the top up, upper right corner and just line them up both in the middle. If I wanted to, I could line it up for middle of height, but I want it at the bottom, so I just lined it up for center. Now right here, it's been a while since I recorded this, so I think I'm trying to make a door here and I Kind of figured out okay I wanted a certain distance and you can see there that I am centering it again because I changed it now when you're changing the length of something if you're clicking on the box on a right side of an object then it will add or subtract that amount you're changing it to on that object on that side so you have to recenter quite a bit Something I'm doing right here is I am cutting a hole. So I've copied that object, I'm making it a little bit smaller and centering it. And then I've made it transparent, which means it is going to cut a hole when I select them and make them both the same shape. Because I'm trying to make a frame of a door here. So as you can see, I've got that lined up and I'm just selecting those two objects not to make it part of the entire thing and there you 
go. We've got a little door for the back of the spreader box. Those of you not familiar with farm toys, the way a spreader box works is you load it up with something, uh, sometimes manure, sometimes fertilizer, sometimes grass seed, um, something like that. And it's going to move the um, stuff that you put in it to the back and throw it out the back or um, wing it out uh, with spinning wheels that basically shoot it farther and spread it out um, for however wide you want to go. So right here, I decided that the sides of the box, I don't want to be just straight. I want them to look a little more realistic. So I'm going to select an angle. So I've cut the wall in half, and I'm going to use that to change the angle a little bit. You can also type in there how much you want to move it, or just drag. Now I've got it at a bit of an angle, moved it over to line up, and you can see there's a little bit of a gap there. So I want to make the bottom one a little bit taller so there is no gap. And there you go. We've got a nice wall side that's angled out, looking a little more realistic like the real one. Again, we can just copy and paste that same thing over to the other side. We'll make it one piece so that this special angled piece is all one object that doesn't get split up when we're trying to move it. And that's already starting to look a lot more realistic. And it's got a pretty cool effect. So again, I'm changing the amount that it moves with my arrows to five millimeters just to make it move faster. And now I'm back at one millimeter. It's the distance that I like to work at. But again, you can constantly change that. So I selected the entire thing. I'm happy with the shape, making it all one thing. And I'm changing the color. Again, this color change doesn't change how you're printing. It's just a nice way, especially when you're making multiple things, to differentiate it when it's different colors. So because I'm going to do some more modifications to it, I have copied it over and set it aside basically to save it so that if I mess this one up quite a bit, I haven't lost everything. I still have the original one to work with. Again, that copy and paste comes in really handy. And I'm selecting the end piece because I'm wanting to make a door here that is the same shape that has those angles of the walls. Now, if I was to just make it with those angles of the walls, it would be really hard and a lot of work. But I can just use the shape I already have to cut into this existing piece. As you can see, it'll cut a really nice shape out of there, and it'll be exact. So, just make it all one shape, and it will cut that right there. So right here, I'm taking a cylinder. Now you have all these basic shapes you can work with, as well as there's a lot of complicated shapes on here, like tires or certain tools and things. But with these basic shapes, they're pretty easy to manipulate. So if you can see, I could make it an oval, but I'm wanting it to be a circle here. So I make the height and width the same amount. 
and I'm using that centering feature and I'm going to center it all the way to the middle. You saw I selected not only regular center but height center as well. So I have copied and pasted it because I'm wanting to make a circle inside a circle. Kind of to simulate a hydraulic cylinder here. So I've selected the whole thing and I've centered it all again. Again, with the different colors, you can change them, make it easier to see what you're doing. I find some colors are really easy to see and some are quite difficult, as well as it's a real big help with motivation when you see it in the colors that you may or may not be painting it in at the end. It's nice to see what's what. As you can see with a hydraulic cylinder, the outside part is black and the inside is silver. So I've made it all one shape, but I can select multicolor to keep those black and gray colors that I had. Making sure when you're selecting not to get more in your box than you wanted. You can see there I turned and tried it again because I was going to be getting my door, which I want to keep separate for now. Again, you can center things and get it lined up real nice. So for this style of spreader box, it has a door on the front that is pushed by that hydraulic cylinder all the way to the back to push whatever is in there out the back. Now some have a chain on the bottom that moves to the back and pulls everything to the back and some have this door style. I'm not replicating any specific one. This is just something I made up on the fly thought it turned out pretty cool and was fun to make. So here I've got a triangle. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And then I'm going to use that feature there to flip it. I'm going to be using this as a cutting tool. So I'm wanting that triangle to be able to cut in a really nice angle. Now I could take a regular square or cube, put it at an angle, but I really like using triangles because you can really manipulate those angles really well. So I'm going to make this the entire length of the whole thing and overhanging, there's no problem with that. So I've copied it and I'm flipping it to the other side because I want to use it over there. So it's very important with these cutting tools that you look at how much overlap there is. There's obviously not enough. So I'm gonna move it up a little bit just to cover that little orange lip that's going between. Now, it's easy for me to just type what height I want it. And you can select the bottom one, which is height from the ground, or you could select the top one, which is height from the original position it was in. Now, as you can see here, it didn't cut perfect. There was a little sliver that got left behind, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Again, when you combine shapes, you can always take them apart again by either hitting the back arrow while you're in it. If you leave this file and come back, you can't hit the back arrow. But if you're in this file whenever, you can select the separate button just right beside the combine button. And then it's all 
several pieces again, rather than one combined piece. So now I've moved things around, I've got rid of those little slivers, looking a lot better now. So that is how I design a spreader box here in Tinkercad, and you can use this same formula to design whatever types of farm toys or vehicles you want. I've used it for everything that I've 3D printed, and it's quite a simple, easy program to use. So thanks for watching and please subscribe.